Hey guys, Scott from Aristocop.com here. And Seth from TheShrinkingPastor.com. Together the three of us were Mark... Mark Men's Breakfast Club! Breakfast Club. It reminds me of the uh, impatient cow joke. Yeah? What's that? Knock, knock. Who's there? Impatient cow. Impatient no. cow. Uh, see how... See how, what I did there? Yeah, I did. <laughs> what are we smoking today? Um, I don't know. What are we smoking today? That's a good question. Oh, something on Drew Estate. Drew Estate, 7th Avenue, Avenue Blonde. Blonde. Blonde with an E. Pretentious E. So I am going to smoke this in a bent general. And I am smoking this bad mamma jamma. <laughs> what is this mamma jamma? Well, that is one of the MacArthur pipes. Um, interesting thing about the MacArthur pipe is Missouri Mearsham made the original pipe for General Douglas MacArthur. And then over the years, that evolved into almost a caricature of his pipe. So what you're smoking there is the version that we've sold for years. Recently, for the uh, movie Emperor, starring Tommy Lee Jones as Doug Douglas MacArthur, they asked Missouri Mearsham to, uh, can they make something that was more to the original <laughs> MacArthur pipe? Which just makes sense. Why are we selling a pipe inspired by MacArthur that's not in the style of his pipe. So, this one is one we've sold for years. The actual MacArthur pipe has the stem a little bit further up, so it's not as deep a bowl, mm. and it gave a little bit more weight at the bottom, which imagine you're smoking this in your Jeep, right? Yeah. The weight of that wants at the tip. You want that to balance the pipe out. Sure. So, sense. you can see on our website now four... If I misfired. Four versions of the MacArthur pipe, um, a bent and a straight. One, the, the straight is natural, and the bent one is, is a polished, kind of like my general here. And two versions of the Emperor MacArthur pipe that are a different shape, more like the actual MacArthur pipe. So, so. this does not go... No, the tobacco goes, goes down superfluous. to about that point right here. Right. So that that's a... That's it's a, a big, big, it's a big bowl. Pipe. Yeah. That bowl holds almost as much as the um, the log, the lumberjack, <laughs> the lumberjack. It, it holds a ton of tobacco. Yeah, it can be tricky that. to smoke too. So enjoy that. Uh, full disclosure: I've had to pre-fill this with some Sir Walter Raleigh, just so that I'm not using all, all of our Seventh Avenue Blonde. Uh, yeah, if we had in this. if we had here in my shop just like a straight Virginia or something that would be a bit more neutral. We would fill it with that. Yeah. Um, so my the flavor that I get might be a little bit off, but since I'll only be burning the Seventh Avenue, hopefully I'll get most of it. You'll be smoking that for 15, 20 minutes here. Right. All right. Light them if you got them. Well, wow, that's fruity. That's uh, that that tastes fruitier than it smelled out of the tin. So. No, that tastes like Play Doh. That's interesting. Mine tastes like Sir Walter cake. <laughs> uh, I think that dad, dad gave this to me and insisted that I smoke it because I, I made the comment that I have found that I really, really like um, this size. A diplomat. Right, diplomat. Uh, for a while, you guys harassed me. I was smoking the nose, nose warmer. Um, and uh, you, you shamed me into getting something a little bit bigger, which has got actually a, a pretty decent capacity bowl in it. It's a great, it's a great pipe, especially during the tobacco advent when we were smoking for ten minutes and then doing another film, uh, another video. But um, one of the big problems I had with this is that uh, when I would accidentally overpack the pipe and it would get really tight, the tamp that we use stops it doesn't get all the way down to the bowl and so i couldn't use this to dislodge what i was smoking and I, that's I don't know the, if you, the patented aristocab pipe tamper right i don't know if you noticed in the last video but that happened to me with the, the flake that we had in this the diplomat you can get all the way down and unclog your unclog your jam and uh that's what i was able to do and i found that useful because on occasion you get a stray um well, if you're Straight using a pipe there. tool like, like the poker that's on that uh, lighter bro, 
Or if you're using a pipe cleaner, you could do that. But if all you have sure. is the, the golf tee, but this it's not going to make it all the way down. For, for getting the full um, area, uh, well, not the full depth, but the full uh, breadth of this cleared out, this is going to take a lot longer on the lighter bro than just using the uh, patented Aristocob tamper. Uh, tamper. So anyway, I grabbed this pipe. This is not going to help oh, him. This is a bigger pipe. This is not going to help him because the uh, the MacArthur pipe has a very thin uh, wooden shank on it, and it has an unfiltered bit or stem, and it's the it's the same bit that you will find on the Patriot pipes, and it's the same size uh, bit and tenon that you find on. The uh, the nose warmer, the Mizu, the Pony Express, the uh, Lady the one that Godiva. a few episodes back we measured and realized it's, sm that it's, it's small. It's small. Well, I didn't realize it was smaller because it can't. It we can't, prove with the calipers. It can't accept a filter, right? So um, this Which option is isn't, anyway. isn't going to help you. <laughs> no, it just it just spurred me to think you haven't smoked that one yet. I don't think. Hmm. All right, so a couple of things in this episode we want to talk with you guys about um this is an isis episode yeah i'm gonna show you something we're gonna show you a couple somethings i got a yabo and the yabo is tool related and i got a couple other tools i wanted to share with you or, or, or gadgets or doodads and seth has got one as well so <clears throat> let's let's move to the yabo which i'll tell you has nothing to do with pipe smoking it's something i bought on ebay and it's one of those items that i've been looking for for the longest time and I don't even know if you know about this. I have a blog called <laughs> I don't even know what I call the darn thing. Gillum Tool Hunter blog or something like that. You can get to it by going to tool-hunter.com which is sort of a portal that'll take you to some of my blogs and it's Gillum or Gilliam Gillum they made a line of tools called Gilbilt, G-I-L-B-I-L-T, Gilbilt. And what they were, everybody who grew up who's my age or older, in the back of Popular Mechanics, Popular Science, Mechanics Illustrated, would see, build your own bandsaw, build your own table saw. Build, build your, your own, own hovercraft. That's different. That was in <sighs> Boy's Life magazine. We're not, we're not building a hovercraft? Not today. Gosh darn. But that one used a vacuum cleaner motor. I... I, I hovered on the idea of buying mm. that. Anyway, uh, what what this company did was they made a whole bunch of of uh, kits and, and plans for building your own woodworking tools. And back in the day before you could go, there were no home centers. Um, Delta, Shopsmith, some of those companies after World War II got into the do-it-yourself uh, market, introducing tools that do-it-yourselfers could afford. And, you know, there weren't tools made in China and Taiwan back in those days. Hmm. And it was cheaper to build your own tool. And so what this company did, and I can pull out the tracking mechanism because it has their name on it. Here, somewhere, it says Gilbilt. Now, now you can't see it. Here, hold that up to the camera right there. Take it up there. Gilbilt. And this is the tracking mechanism. On a bandsaw, you've got to be able to put tension on the, the wheels. You pull the wheels apart, and that adds tension to your blade. And then you have to be able to tilt the upper wheel. So there's the upper wheel. It's cast aluminum. has a bronze bushing, not a ball bearing. This is the 12-inch version. They had a larger version as well. Or you could buy any of these pieces and parts and make your own parts. You could, you could make your own wheel sure. out of uh, wood or plywood and uh, build a bandsaw. They had a couple table saws, one that had a tilting blade on it, which was pretty cool. And uh, here's the the upper guide that's going to guide the the blade as it tracks. Even the tires on Whoa. here. These are the trunnions for tilting the table. Mmm, I like funions. Not funions. Close. This is this part that I'm not sure I recognize. What is that? That looks like an axle for the wheel and the tilt. So. Oh, wow. So this is where the wheel's going to mount, and that other part is just, I don't know. All right, now I'm confused. At any rate, I bought this. I've been watching on eBay for kits. I'd love to find one that was never built that was in the original package, and I'll, I'll keep looking for that. Using GoofBid? I used GoofBid. 
I used that the other day for yeah. the first time. Yeah, I was trying to find some pogs. How'd that work for and you? Slammers. I didn't get any. Yeah, I'm still looking for, for slammers. I I, I um, haven't gotten any yet. The pogs I know I can get from Amazon. But okay, well on on my blog I give you information to contact the manufacturer. They still exist. That company's still around. They still make the kits available to people and the, and the mm -hmm. plans. And but they I have, think there's there's something in the back of Consumer Reports. Well, they they have no website, no web presence at all. You get a hold of them by calling them or writing them. And the folks that own it, they they're just those kind of folks. They want to talk to their customer. They want to interact with them in that way. I think it's just a guy in his garage. It's a it's a man in his machine shop and his wife. That's cool. All right, so uh, cool. check out that blog and you'll see the information on there about how to contact these folks. And I've tried, as I've stumbled across people that have built these on their websites or posting them on other websites, I, I'll contact them and say, can I use your picture and share a little bit about your project? There have been some really cool tools that guys have made using those kits. So That's cool. check that out. If you have the desire to you know, have some, not just ownership of your tools, but to be involved in the engineering of yeah. it, you can do all kinds of cool. What are you doing? Hydrating, I take it? Big big water for big pipe. Uh -huh. Somebody told me I was doing this wrong, that I needed to do it uh, moonshine style, which oh. is what on... I don't even know how you... Over your sneezy elbow. That's right. That's right. With the thumb, like this, right? Yeah, that's a win. All right, a few other things. I'm a huge fan of the manufacturer Fast Cap. And uh, the owner of Fast Cap is a guy that uh, I'm, I'm just a huge fan of. He is a, a, he's an, he's a very smart businessman. He, he cares for his employees and has a neat operation, employs a whole bunch of people in Bellingham, um, Washington. He's an inventor. He has a number of patents. He works with people that have ideas for tools, and he brings it to market, and they get a, a, a royalty from that. And I just find his cool his tools are so intuitive and so clever. What's for, what's the? Uh, I was gonna say, isn't there a product of his that you use all the time as it relates to YouTube? A couple of products. Uh, the iPole is the iPole. made by uh, uh, FastCap, and also that Rhino mount, the suction cup and, mm -hmm. and camera mount. I use it all the time. He he started his company, and why it's called FastCap. He started with these peel and stick cover caps that a carpenter or a cabinet maker would use to cover up screw heads or wounds from screw heads. So he sells cover caps in all these different sizes and shapes and materials, and you can get them in, in actual wood, both bare, uh, unfinished Rawr. wood, Rawr. unfinished wood, finished woods, um, PVC, to match any plastic laminate that a cabinet maker might be using. He came out with a tape measure a number of years back that on it has a giant fast cap cover cap and you can write on this with a pencil you know, you're up on a ladder and you're 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 taking, taking a measurement and like where you put the measurement well you write it right on the cover uh, uh, the cap that's on the tape measure yeah. well the thing i really like about paul is he listens to his customers he really tunes in to his customers and and he's not afraid to change and improve his product and somebody said paul great idea but i was up on my ladder writing on this with my pencil and my pencil broke so it didn't do me any good. Well, Paul... <laughs> and that's totally... So Paul added into all of his tape measures a pencil sharpener. Why not? Uh, okay. He's got his... What about a pencil holder? The clip. He does have a pencil holder that you can put on your belt that then this clips on. His pocket clip or belt clip didn't work for everybody. They were saying, you know, I have to fumble with this. And so he improved the belt clip by adding... A little place to, so when you go to put on your belt, you give it a pinch. Which is so smart because I hate on. the ones on the most yeah. um, tape measures because you just can't you can't get it. I, I always have a hard time getting it through my loop. And then once it's on there, you can't ever get it off. That's right. I use a lot. Uh, I work with European hardware a lot. I'll be building cabinets that are in a method of construction called frameless or full access. And so I need to be able to measure metric and measure in inches. So I get a tape from them that is both metric and inches. Um, a lot of folks don't know the end of this part of the tape measure needs to float a little bit. 
back when uh, your grandparents had a hardware store and I was working there with, with my bride, we had a guy who came in, he walked back to the tape measures and he grabs one off the shelf and he jiggles it and he throws it down on the shelf that was beneath the wall rack there. And he takes another one and he jiggles it and he throws it down. Now this gets my attention, as you might imagine. And I walked over and said, excuse me, can I, can I help you? And he goes, all of these tape measures are defective. This part moves and it's, it's affecting my measurements. And I calmly said, well, it moves by design. Because if you were to measure inside of something from that position and then measure outside of something, you'd get two different, different dimensions. Yeah. You'd get a dimension that's off by that little yeah. amount right there. So that's got to move. But by needs, that much. It needs to move that much. Yeah. Well, so all of them move, but most of them, this is a point where they tend to fail. Mm -hmm. And that's usually because they have two rivets. Well, look what FastCap has done. They've got three rivets there, and they've reinforced the back of the tape where the rivets go through. Mm -hmm. You never see that. Um, just, there's so many clever ideas incorporated into their tape measures. You can buy these at Woodcraft. You can buy them at Rockler. You can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them on eBay. Search for them. This one happens to be what they call metric standard. Did you say you can buy them at fastcap.com? You can buy them at fastcap.com. I imagine. This one is a tape measure called True 32. It is for 32 millimeter construction, which is European. So it's got metric on both sides. The other and thing, I was, uh, I was at Odyssey of the Mind the other week. They had a tape measure and... It had just one of those buttons that you press, uh, which is good for a quick measurement, but it didn't work. I I appreciate about oh, these. I don't ever use. I don't woodwork, but lock it out. They lock so solid mm -hmm. that you never have that frustration of oh, uh, why is this? You don't you don't question if it's moved <laughs> when you go from one thing to another. Yeah, that's true. A couple other things. When we signed all of the cob, no, not cob foolery, the tobacco advent. Mm -hmm. Uh, pipes. We Ornaments. Needed, we needed a pen that was very small. So I went over to my toolbox and I grabbed this pen. Well, I didn't say anything about it. I think that video was silent anyway. This is a... Uh, we had a, Benny Hinn a, plan. A broad marker. Benny Hill. But on this end is a very long, long tip and a very small diameter marker. And this is designed... If you've ever needed to, to trace something, you know, on a piece of wood or a piece of paper... Problem is, it holds your pen or pay, uh, pencil so I'm far away from the edge. With that, I can get real tight in and get a very accurate yeah. uh, tracing. That's a fast cap product. They sell they they sell a pencil called Fat Boy, and this is a mechanical pencil, right? That has a massive, massive oh, lead. Oh yeah, it does. Very strong lead. And this is a, it's like a, a pin vise there that will grip that at whatever distance you need. Of course, it has an eraser, eraser built into the end. Hold on a second. I forget how to get to the eraser. There we go. It's a significant eraser. A significant eraser. And then it comes with a bunch of the replacement leads. Um, writing in pencil, especially when you're doing layouts in the shop, is a smart idea mm -hmm. for things. But what made me go and grab all these things out of my toolbox was I was looking for this. This is two-sided tape made by FastCap called Speed Tape, and it's fantastic tape for permanent uh, affixing of things. You can use this tape for, like, stacking boards together to cut them all out, identical shapes on the bandsaw or scroll saw, but if you do that with this tape, you better use very little of it because yeah. it's really designed for a, a permanent or at least semi-permanent affi affixion, affixing? Affixiation. Affixiation. <laughs> That's something different. <clears throat> and I was thinking about, and we, we kept this from the uh, Tobacco mm. Pass. This yeah. is from uh, Nate and Rachel. And I'm, I'll give you this recommendation, Nate and Rachel. Instead of hot melt glue like you've used on the back of this, Get yourself some speed tape from FastCap and use that to bond it. It'll it'll work fantastic forever. And what I'll do is I'll I'll lay whatever the object is I'm taping. Um, I'll put it just the the tape is weird. It's it's almost like a gelatin glue. Mm, there's not much to it though. It's an acrylic yeah, adhesive. But... 
It's an acrylic adhesive. It's when not. You, when you you first stick, what you think of when you think of like tape. When you first stick this to something, you'll say, well, that's not sticking real well. Look, I can peel it right off. And you can. Give it about 24 hours, and the acrylic adhesive, once it's reacting, now that I've pulled this tape off, it reacts to the air, mm. and it begins to become uh, very strong. Is it oxidized? So I, I will put this on with the, uh, in this case, it's ever so slightly inset. This is overlapping the tape. And then I'll trim this off flush on something. I'm using Seth's notepad here to trim this. <laughs> I just cut. I'm using a good knife. So now I've got that on the back of this. I'll peel this off and stick it on, and it will be a great permanent attachment. The trick is with two-sided tape, always getting that uh, the second layer off, getting the backing, pulling off. the tape off. There is actually a trick to this with this tape that if you instead of trying to pick on the edge of it, you 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 pick in from the edge, you dig your nail in or your corner of your knife in. And then you can peel it off without hmm. peeling the tape off. I'm going to go like this with this. Okay. Bam! That is now permanently looks like fixed. A, looks like a, a Band-Aid. kind of does. Nice. Now I am good to go. Awesome. Well, I've got some other things I want to show you guys, but I think we'll save those for next week. Um, there are some technology nerdy things, so... Uh, keep an eye out for that. We'll and put links to these things in our yeah, uh, yeah. description. Check those yeah. out. You can pick them up, like I said, everywhere. And uh, yeah, we probably won't put links to everywhere, but enough links <laughs> that you, you can get them. <laughs> Maybe we'll link to to a search for fast cap products in various places. Sure. They all every everybody pretty much sells it at the same price, so. Um, just pick the place that you're comfortable buying from that you can maybe yeah. get the free shipping on. Yeah, cheap shipping. And go, go that way. So. All right. Anything else? Gosh, could there be more? There could be, but there Not won't be. Not going to be. <laughs> Thanks for watching. That's right. Make it a great week. And see you guys next week.